Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the final segment of Youth Matters where we're looking at and discussing mental health and how it impacts a young person, what can be done about it, what are some of the signs and you know trying to generally just raise mental awareness and uh, so that we can do more to help those around us. Alhamdulillah, let's uh, discuss the topic of manushik shasto, mental health. আমরা ভাই বোন আমরা কমিউনিটির মাঝে যে তারা মেন্টাল প্রবলেম থাকে আমরা তারা খেলা সাহায্য করতাম পারমো কিতা অ্যাডভাইস নিলে ডাক্তার লগে গিয়ে মাতলে না দোলক আমরা ইয়াং ভাই বোন থাকুন যদি তারা কিতা করতে পারবা আপনার প্যারেন্টস আপনারা আপনারাও কিতা করতে পারবা ওখানে আমরা মাত্রান সো প্লিজ আপনারা না নিশ্চয়ই কই বাসব ফোন করো কা আপনারা যদি কোনো কোশ্চেন থাকে আমরা ফানলর এক্সপার্ট আইন তরে আপনারা হোক কা না আপনারা যদি কিছু দেখছো না তোরা অ্যাডভাইস সাইন হোক কা সো ওয়ান্স এগেন আজ ওয়েজ ইউ নো দিস শো ইজ ট্রাইং টু সাপোর্ট আওয়ার ইয়াং ব্রাদার sisters out there so please do get involved this is your show and our parents if you've got a question that you need answering or you've seen something and you're a bit worried please uh, do phone in uh, the number should be on the screen and uh, participate in this discussion now khalil bhai what is the picture with regards to mental health looking like in the uh, british bangladeshi community um it's not um too bad compared to where we were about 20 years ago um However, this still remains a big challenge. Um we are seeing a lot of young people actually coming through the mental health services. And there are ma- various factors we talked about earlier on what could be the reasons and it could be drugs, could be the pressure they go through. Um but the picture in the future is not dark, it's okay. bright. So yeah. There are um, particularly I was involved with Bangladesh Mental Health Forum. I was involved since I think 2004 and due to my work circumstances I had to move area therefore I'm no longer involved. But the charity still exists and it particularly focuses on Bangladeshi community primarily in Tar Hamlets and surrounding Barra but it, it works around raising awareness in Bangladeshi community and honestly speaking there's not much research has been done has not been commissioned to do a survey research what's the percentage but what i can say also it's very important that bangladeshi community also take that as a challenge because you need to look after yourself of course. no one's going to look after mm, you thank you now doctor um from your experience which uh, ethnic groups would you say are more you know uh prone to mental illnesses is 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 that the right way to look at it you know what are the which uh, ethnic groups people from different backgrounds uh, mm. suffer more from mental health problems an interesting question i don't think there is uh, at least to my knowledge there is such research to shows which ethnic minority um, i think mental is something that can occur to any sure. um, a community to any uh, regardless of age and um, where you come from um but in in some communities uh, as you mentioned rightly the way they respond to it might make things more difficult for example in um eastern culture um maybe in bangladeshi um but generally middle east uh, uh, there's a lot of stigma attached to speaking about, about mental health if someone has got problem uh, those sort of reactions might actually make it more complicated but in terms of the prevalence of it in which my c- community I, i wouldn't say mm. it is more prevalent in okay. certain communities okay. so i guess from what you both said you know i think more research needs to be done on this mm. so we can break it down further i do you know you've i'm, I'm sure uh, the last thing you want us to talk about is exam pressure but would you say exam pressure can lead to someone having uh, mental health problems someone who's young Have you seen that? Have you seen people where close to an exam time they've actually really suffered and you know in their st- mental state has changed? Have you seen that? Well, I haven't actually seen anyone like suffering from mental is- uh, mental issues due to exam pressure alone. So even uh, but, so um, the students in your year group they they don't worry about their exams, they don't no, no, they, they, do, they do they do worry about exams, but um you know it's it, it's it's not it's not common that um people have mental health issues just because of exams alone. It's usually a mixture of lots of different things happening at the same time but um of course like clo- coming close to the exam period is is very tr- it's very traumatic and it's very stressful sure um it does affect a person um sometimes if they feel like they haven't performed well in an exam it can lead to further issues them not performing in the exams after that and so on and so forth it's just um yeah sure. ha- yeah i think you t- uh, touched upon a very interesting point so if a child underachieves if a student underachieves can that then have a significant effect on their mindset moving forward 
Yeah, of course. It can, it can sort of change the aspirations. So, for example, if a person wants to become a doctor and they don't meet the, the sort of requirements that they need at GCSE, then it just sort of, uh, they have to sort of think of new aspirations. And it's just, it's sometimes it's hard to take. And, um, of course, like, no one wants to be in that situation. Mm. Okay, thank you. Now, Khalil Bhai, in terms of, you know, you hear a lot of stories, a lot of you read a lot of articles in the news where it talks about spirit release and uh, mental health and talking about possession and so forth. Um, you working with the Bengali community so closely and mental health, how, how do you, you know, what's your take on that? Um, if you're from Muslim background, this kind of makes the article of faith for you to believe in jinn existing okay. and possessions. Therefore, it makes it easier for someone to accept in possession than mental health um, and go to seek help from those area of experts. Um, in terms of understanding, sometimes we don't understand mental health. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between mental health and gene possession? Sure. So that makes it difficult because whereas physical health, if you break your leg, you can go for a scan and see your leg is broken and it's fixing. Whereas mental health, it's not. You can go, you can go get a scan and see you've got mental health problem or even gene possession, for sure. example. Therefore, it is quite common for people to rather um, seek help from an imam or sometimes imposter pretending to be imam, sure. taking advantage of their difficult circumstances or of situation. Course. And people can get into a difficult situation with that. Because and of that, thank yeah. you. Dr. Now, Brother Khalil speaks about, obviously, the challenges and he talks from a faith perspective. Is that something, is there work that can be done there where religious uh, faith leaders of all backgrounds, they can work with uh, medical doctors, uh, psychologists, to try and come up with, because obviously with physical injuries, there's a solution, mm. it's quite straightforward, like Khalibai speaks about. But when it comes to mental health and how we approach stuff like uh, spirit release and other kind of uh, phenomenons that are not clearly defined and solutions aren't as easily accessible. Sure. I'd like to approach that question uh, from my perspective and not from the position but from what religious leader perhaps what they could do because as we said rightly because mental is not something tangible that we can actually say it there are a variety of views about it and some views are more helpful than some others um, I don't want to be judgmental to see which one is better it depends on circumstances and me being a psychologist I'll, of course I adhere to more kind of scientific view but I think in terms of what religious leaders could do, they, because a lot of people like people that go to religious leaders, they can be huge help in terms of they giving the right advice, who to approach, uh, or just talk to them in the sense of to give them a spiritual guidance. Um, so they can have a big part actually in promoting and helping people to seek help rather than see it as something that has to be um, as, as a taboo or not to be a speak about. Khalibai, mm. you spoke about you know, people you know, uh, who you know, they are referred to as, I guess, witch doctors who try and uh, take advantage of people's uh, mental health or, or a particular given situation in a person's life. Um, what is, what would you, you know, people watching at home who might be getting advice from these so-called witch doctors, what would be your advice? Because it can be very dangerous, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of um, people that waiting to jump onto those kind of situation and take advantage, wow. yeah. And there has been a lot of recorded incident, even media, in a lot of stories you read, you know, even, uh, you know, I've, I've witnessed myself and I've been told you have to do this, give me some, this amount of money. Where there's somebody's asking for money and things, you need to be careful who you go to and who you trust with this. And people in this situation, they are willing to go to anybody because they want to overcome this difficulty. Mm -hmm. And for their child, they want, don't want to see them suffering sure. with this child or even for themselves. Therefore, it's very important that you carefully choose who you go to mm. for help. Adil, bringing you into the conversation, from a young person's perspective, how, how would it feel if you were to witness that? If you were, say for example, you know, uh, you were in a situation where you were seeing someone being taken advantage, you know, taken advantage of because of their lack of understanding and them going to say someone like a witch doctor. You know, how, how would you react to something like that? What would you do? Because there might be young people at home watching this who are actually experiencing this uh, on a first-hand basis. How, what would you do and, uh, you know, how would you react? Uh, you know, in that situation, as the brother has touched upon, um, you, you're willing to go to anyone to seek help because you're not sure of what to do. Um, it's, it's very difficult to say, but um, 
What would you do in that situation if you witnessed something? Say you went to a friend's house and you saw someone, you know, uh, giving advice and they weren't uh, necessarily, you know, and you could sense that they, uh, what they were saying uh, just didn't add up or it didn't seem right. What do you do in a situation like that? If I saw it firsthand happening to someone I know, then um, obviously in, in, in their own personal time, I'll, I'll go up to them and I'll speak to them and tell them, you know, um, and I'd, I'd ask them, uh, do you know, uh, who, what this person is doing and yeah I'd approach them mm. in, at a later time ask sure. them how everything's going but I think the most important message you're saying is something needs to that communication has to happen yeah there needs it to be communication between between um, people yeah I think that's really important um, now I do I'm going to stay with you um, from your perspective do you feel, you know, we've got two professionals who deal with people with mental health, supporting, advising. As a young person, do you think there's enough exposure on what to do? On what to do, say, for example, if a family member has mental health problems or if, you know, you want to know about it. Do you, do you feel there's enough there to access? I feel like there is enough there to access. There's loads of, like, brilliant organisations um, to help people get, get on with that. But the only problem is, it's just, um, although there are loads of places to go to, people aren't aware of it still. And um, there's, there's still like lack of communication between people and their family um, because of the fact that it's a taboo subject and people don't like to talk about it. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So uh, Dr. Babur, you know, Adil speaks about the fact that the, the awareness is there. But it's because of that taboo, you know, uh, feel to it that people choose not to take advantage of those services. Would you agree with that? I would, yeah. I, I, I think there is more that can be done in terms of a lot of common practice is to do how to do mental health right and how we can prevent it, mm. pre preventative measures, basically. Uh, and tho those preventative measures require more effort and planning, um, educating, um, um, and people, if people can have access to um, uh, resources where they can have a better understanding, like for example in our previous conversation about the position and stuff like that, uh, how, how people choose to seek professionals, sure. uh, go to a GP as opposed to imam or vice versa, or some other people who might actually not even be qualified as religious leaders. Uh, I think th they, they, there is more needs to be done in terms of educating people and making them aware. Sure. So this kind of taboo subject become less of a taboo and becomes something that can be spoken about. Okay. Now, staying with you, Doctor, um, would you say is mental health something that's genetic, you know, related to genetics, hereditary, or is it something that's developed? What do What's your take on that? I think that's the hot potato subject, <laughs> if you ask me, because it depends how, what sort of professional you ask that question, they might give you a different answer. And that also shows that this domain is, is still in the embryonic stage, I would say. And okay. um, if you ask a, a medical, uh, strictly medical um, professional, they might say, yeah, there is a strong genetic factors to it. Although I do not deny that genetic plays a part, but I think, uh, as a psychologist, I think is more to do with um, how people experience their lives in the context of family, community, and society. Sure. Uh, whether they feel accepted, whether they feel loved, and whether they feel they can talk to people when they have problems. Okay. Um, those things, I think, are more important. Sure, than because I think there might be young people here who have family members who might have mental health problems. And they Absolutely. might be worried that, you know, mm. is this something that is going to happen to me regardless of what I do. So that's really good advice. Um, Khalibai, would you say it's it's more common amongst young women or young men? Or once again, is there not enough data to try and... There's not enough data. Also, remember, not everyone they experience to come in contact with services. Remember that. There still might be people out there that experience mental health, but not with any services. Okay. So, and the reasons, hence we're discussing yeah. Um, yeah. the taboo subject might be the reason. Because in you know, the Bangladeshi community particularly, if somebody is identified with a crazy, mad family, we don't want to have relationship with them, mm -hmm. we don't want to have marriage tie with them. So it's the social implications, social implications that implications being categorized prevent, yeah, people <laughs> as having a mental illness can have. Absolutely, wow. yeah. Okay. Um, Adu, in terms of, I'll obviously get the professional opinions in terms of preventative and solutions. But say, for example, young people watching at home right now who are watching this and they're worried. What would you say? What would you? What would be your advice uh, based on what you've heard? Because, mashallah, it's been very educational today. I think 
what young people should do is um, if they if they feel like they have a problem, they need to find someone they trust and they need to talk to them about it because talking to someone really helps a person in that situation. Excellent, that's brilliant advice. Doctor, coming to you, in terms of what could a person do? So say for example, if a person's going through, you know, a low level of depression or, you know, a bit of anxiety and stuff like that, what are the things that they can do so that it doesn't build up to something much more serious? Well, I think it starts from family and school. Uh, I think these two are very important for young people because these two are the environment that they spend most of the time with, either in the context of the family. And if the relationship of the young person with parents or siblings are not that trustworthy or comfortable, I think it would be make it very difficult to speak about it. So I think my advice would be for parents to um, you know, be more accessible to the children, uh, to the young people. Uh, sometimes, because it's a difficult subject, people might be able to directly talk about it. They might show it in the behavior or they might be withdrawn. They might not be very, actually show it in the marks at the school. Uh, uh, so they might have a deterioration, the functioning, before they be able to speak about it. And a sensitive parents can pick on sure. that. A so sensitive the, teacher can pick that on. Sure, so, so the advice is for our parents, if there are kind of signs that they spot, not to let it develop, but try and investigate a bit, find out what's going Absolutely, on. Absolutely, because a lot of time okay. parents parents could be judgmental That's and fine. see it as the person is lazy or they okay. don't want to do okay. it. I, I think this sort of judgment can uh, stop people That's speaking fine. about okay. it. Okay, well, we've got a couple of callers on the line. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum caller. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum caller. Alaikum Salaam, can you hear me? Yes, uh, sister, go ahead. Uh, how would you like to contribute? Um, well, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, my mother wanted to know, she's very interested um, she just wanted to ask, um, in regards to mental health, would you be able to translate that into Bengali um, and just give us a brief uh, description about how it comes about? Is it through genes or is it through life experiences? Um, and just explain that in Bengali, really. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, sister. And can we take the next caller as well, please? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Well, Assalamu sister. How would you like to contribute? Um, I would like to ask a question from um, Dr. Bob, please. Yeah. Um, as a person who has a member of family um, who suffers uh, from mental health, and earlier on you were um, talking about the mental health, it's not something that you can see through scans or something. So as a patient, as a, um, as a carer, how do you choose which uh, path to take in terms of um, see a psychologist and... Um, use a therapy or go and see a psychiatrist and take medication despite the fact that um, you know it's not something that you can um, men uh, medically um, sort of say that 100% you're suffering from this uh, sure. condition so as a patient how do you choose your path and um, what 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 do you need to do okay thank you sister I think two uh, brilliant questions uh, what would you, uh, first of all, uh, I'll come to you Khalil Bay. in terms of, I think it was the question that, I, that we in fact discussed, um, but I think we want a bingo answer so that the mother who's watching, uh, who doesn't understand English properly. So is this something that is based on genetics, hereditary, or is it something that's developed, mental health? Have you Bangali? Please. Bangali. It's a challenge now. <laughs> Can't remember the last time I took Bangali. It's a very difficult question. It's a very difficult question. It's a very difficult question. अपने जे अपने जीवन और जे एक्सपीरियंस और खुदा की हुई तो फारे अपने जे जे एनवायरनमेंट जे शामिल जो अपने बड़ो ही सोन आ जे कुनो जे दरों और अपने कुनो दरों और जिन्हें खोस्तो या तक लाइफ हो गुले अपना कंट्रीब्यूट होता फारे कुनो शामिल जो हुई तो फारे पर होय तो अपना कुनो कुनो जो आसे जमान तरा इनाफ रिसर्च करो इसे ना एक रूप रे इनाफ स्टडी करो इसे ना एक होनो एरली स्टेज जो जिन्हें कंक्लुशन ना एक होनो कंफर्म करो इसे ना नीटा अपना बंगशोगोतो ही तो फारे कि अपना जे शामिल जो अपने � how do you know which pathway to go uh, in regards to treatment or support? Mm. I, I think the mo first obvious one is the GP, really, uh, because they're the first point of contact in terms of um, initial screening and assessment and flagging up to specialist services. Um, um, but I think apart from that, um, you, you know, the carers can actually, they, they need to educate themselves to have a better understanding of what mental health is about. Um, 
they, they need to approach GP if they are concerned about something. I, I think it depends on the severity of the situation. If someone is really unwell, maybe approaching GP would not be the first um, advisable thing. Maybe they need to go to A and E, for example, okay. if the person is really um, acute in acute phase. But if there are some signs that suggest the person might need some help, um, normally, I mean, in the UK, GPs are the first point of contact, and then then things can get stopped from there. That's fine. Can I add can to that? Can I just add to this for the sisters, Ben and Bengali? And others? No, in English, okay. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> it's going to be tough for me to explain Bengali. I think it's better if we speak English. Fine. It's easier. <laughs> um, I think it's really what's worked for the person. I think, as the doctor mentioned, if he's in crisis, you don't want to be calling somebody. You want to go to hospital immediately and get help if you're feeling in crisis in it. And the first point of control is definitely GP. And also my going to GP and giving medication, not necessarily that medication will work for you. Of course. It's really what works for you. That's some it, talking therapy works for some people, medication works for some people, or combination of both. So it's what really works for you. For an individual. individual. Okay. Yeah. Now, Khalibai, how effective do you feel a spiritu uh, spirituality is as a source of um, healing, say, a mental problem? Yeah. Um, I remember going back four or five years in West London, there was a project, pilot project, working with London Central Mosque, which is Regent Park Mosque. And the outcome was phenomenal. The people that actually was, have mental health diagnosis, working with Imam as well, their, their, uh, their quality of life has improved so much compared to before. So there is a benefit, definitely there was a, I'm not sure if there's been uh, you know, commissioned elsewhere, but there was an um, outcome of that pilot project was really good. So, so, so you would say someone who's quite, you know, um, their spirituality, whatever faith that they believe yeah. in, that can actually help them overcome some of the uh, absolutely, mental absolutely, health problems. Yeah, yeah. Okay, absolutely. and have you seen that in the community as well? I have, yeah. Um, people um, tend to rely on, you know, a spir a spirituality in difficult uh, circumstances and situation. And that's the kind of they're holding on to something mm. That to help them overcome, which is um, psychological, also works. Mm. Uh, Adil, you know, uh, I think sometimes, obviously, stuff like even sleeping. We, when you read about articles, you know, even sleep uh, deprivation can cause a young person to um, suffer mental problems. Uh, do you feel that in this current day and age, where you know people are on their phones all the time, they're going, they're having very little sleep? Do you feel um, that can have a big impact? Uh, on a person, you know, on a young person, so when they're not sleeping, because young people, from your perspective, there are a lot of young people don't sleep enough. Mm. You hear that in the studies that, that we read about. Yeah, of course. Like even in um, some of my friends as well, um, but it's 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 very, it's very widespread um, because of um, the advances of uh, technology and stuff like that. Um, people are always on their mobile phones, and usually it leads to like a lack of sleep. Um, I know people who sleep around 4 a.m. in the morning and they have to wake up wow. at 8 a.m. so they get very little sleep and okay. it does impact the education okay. and many other things. We've got a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum caller. Oh, Aslam boy. Alhamdulillah. What is your question, uh, Aslam boy? I was watching the show actually. It's very really interesting. <coughs> Uh, I just want to contribute to a few things. Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, when, um, uh, sometimes the depression yeah, makes people really, uh, uh, may make them lose the balance sometimes, yeah? And people go through some difficulties and uh, some of people sometimes, sometimes they think they will say, hey, it's a gene issue, that issue, uh, you know, a lot of things they do, yeah? But, <clears throat> uh, for example, if, if it's for children, it can be sometimes because uh, a school, even simple thing like bullying at school, can put a child into a depression, yeah? And then, well, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing like this, actually, um, you know, give a lot of uh, effect uh, in terms of uh, mental illness and like that, yeah? Okay. So, um, we need to look out for those signs, actually. What is the thing that is affecting whether a child or an elderly person? And uh, <laughs> we need to find the root cause of uh, the effect. Sometimes that's, that's missing, you know. Even yeah. uh, the doctors, uh, the mental health services, uh, through the assessment, they can uh, go to the bottom of the uh, problem. Actually. 
Okay, thank you very much, Aslam Bay. I think um, we're coming towards the end of the show, so um, I think the caller spoke about uh, not just uh, trying to address it, but trying to find the root problem uh, of this uh, whole kind of topic that we're talking about. And our guest alluded to the fact that there's so much out there that can be done. But I think, Im I think immediately what we need to do is understand, try and... Uh, there's so many services out there that are offering free support and I think you know not to worry about the stigma attached to it but to try and actually find out you know is this something that might affect me in the long run and I think all of us our parents our young brothers and sisters who are watching this you know please don't feel bad uh, or feel scared to try and look into whether this is something that could develop into something much bigger go and find out go and see because it might be something that's actually nothing so it's just something for you not to worry about uh, alhamdulillah amra school shorma amra discuss khoran amra mental health amra community amra amra young bhai bonen tore amra old uh, parents tore kile effect hore khoto ta services ase apnara gyan ani ota ge access khoroka apnara jodi ani mentally apnar mani health oto bala nai apnara ge find out khoroka kita khora jay kita khole apnar shajjo ibo apnara khoto ta ak ta ta exercise khoroin jodi apnara shajjo ibo apnara jodi bala diet ta khte apnara shajjo ibo so amra ak ta ta ota khori na ar buji aro kichu boroi jay ar amra aro sinta khori so apnara please ota khorba aro jinish hoilo apnara nani কত মানুষ আসইন দৈলৌকা হইবা জিনই গেছে নাই অতই গেছে আপনারা নানি থারার আপনারা নানি যে যে ইমাম আসইন মাসজিদ আইন টপ মাসজিদ আইন থারা লগে গা মাথইন যেন এখানে আখতা তা কত মানুষ আসইন এডভাইস আপনার রং দিতা পারইন রং দি আর সুটো জিনিস আটা খুব বড় ইস্ত পারে বাট আপনারা অলসো ডাক্তর আইন তো লগেও গা মাথইন যেন সো কমিউনিটি লিডার আইন তো লগে মাথইন যেন ডাক্তর আইন তো লগে মাথইন যেন দের আর লট অফ পিপল ইন আ কমিউনিটি ফর আ ইয়াং ব্রাদার্স এন্ড সিস্টার্স এন্ড আ প্যারেন্টস হু মাইট গিভ ইউ দ্য রং এডভাইস এন্ড আ গেস স্পোক অ্যাবাউট দিস দিস উইচ ডক্টরস ইউ টু বি ভেরি কেয়ারফুল ওয়াট ইউ নিড টু ডু ইজ গো এন্ড স্পিক টু রেপুটেবল ইমামস ইন আ টপ মাসজিদস ইন আ টপ মস্কস এন্ড অলসো গো এন্ড স্পিক টু হেলথ প্রফেশনালস ইউ জি পিস ইউ ডক্টরস বিকজ দিস আর দ্য পিপল হু আর দ্য এক্সপার্টস এন্ড দে আর দ্য পিপল হু ক্যান রিয়েলি সাপোর্ট আস whether we're young or old So you know I really hope that you've enjoyed the show and you've benefited and thank you for all our callers who've contributed and thank you to all our guests so inshallah for now uh, we'll leave you so bala tahoka assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh